Hello and welcome to this edition of Namra Kachenu where the focus is on tax, customs and excise matters. I'm Shipen Njambi Kuhanga, keeping your company for the next half an hour or so. In today's episode, the Trans Kalahari border post is now open for 24 hours. The 2023 Namra Taxpayer and Trader Appreciation Day was a resounding success. NAMRA, together with the South African Customs Union, held a stakeholders' engagement on the Authorized Economic Operator Program. Last but not the least, NAMRA donates agricultural production tools to the Namibian Correctional Services. All that and more will be coming to you in a while. Stay tuned. The Trans Kalahari Mamuno border post is now open for 24 hours. This follows the launch of the 24 hour operation by the government of Namibia and Botswana on the 1st of April 2023 at Trans Kalahari in Omaheke region. Now, the move is part of improving efficiency in customs administration and boosting economic development in the region. The trans Karahari border post to be operational with effect from today on 24 hour basis. So with, together with my sister, I don't know, we are not informed whether it's this side or this side. So just put it, just put it together. More than 40 taxpayers and traders were awarded for being compliant by the Namibia Revenue Agency. This was the second time that NAMRA is hosting the Taxpayer and Trader Appreciation Day since inception. At the occasion, Commissioner Sam Shivute commended several taxpayers and traders for being compliant and contributing to state revenue during the past 12 months. Let's look at the highlights. NAMRA recently announced the new tax amnesty program, which will see the complete write-off of interest and penalties upon the settlement of the capital amount. I call upon taxpayers to take advantage of this rare opportunity that will put them in a position to be celebrated and awarded at prestigious occasions such as this one. Now, in meeting the need for taxpayer education and in striving for continuous improvement in service delivery and also in carrying out our enforcement. We carry out all these activities to provide impetus for improved service delivery. And this begets the revenue maximization, which we need for a multitude of governmental objectives, and hence the theme for tonight. Taxes and duties build Namibia. Now sometimes that which we contribute, we take it for granted. But as a result of your contribution, some members of our community who would under normal circumstances be destitute they are not destitute because of your contribution. Here I'm referring to the most vulnerable members of our society, the elderish, the, the, the orphan, those who under normal circumstances they will not be able to afford a private uh, health services 
But in Namibia, the public hospital, they will always be able to treat you, whether you have a medical aid or not. Yes, we do have political independence. Economic emancipation and economic independence, we are not yet there. We can only get economic emancipation and be independent through domestic resource mobilization. And this year, you launched the AEO, Authorized Economic Operator Program. Just in case you did not receive the feedback, Sam, your approach in launching the AEO did set the standard and we were very happy to adopt this standard ourselves. It set the standard in rolling out the program. because we have to and also we want to uh, because it builds Namibia and we can only do it together. Um, but I would like to thank um, firstly Namra for this partnership, for the recognition, for my team at AB InBev, my Namcom team. Um, I think for all of our consumers, our customers in the business, thank you so much for the support throughout the years and thank you for the support to everybody. Thank you once again. Uh, in our vision, there is that way of positively impacting the livelihood of every Namibian. Where we say we want to become a world-class revenue agency, we want to serve with passion to positively impact the livelihood of every Namibian. And we do know that tax and duties build Namibia. <laughs> Namra, in collaboration with SACU, held a stakeholders' engagement on the Authorized Economic Operator Program. Now, the program is aimed at enhancing voluntary compliance and strengthening the relationship between Namra and its stakeholders. Let's have a look at how the session went. I would want to encourage that, like, that just like we talked that talk about we are very committed to the concept of customs to business we are also very mindful of the fact that this cannot be done by one entity not by saku not by namra master nico oberolzel here was talking about they are focusing more on border integrated manage border management and integrated of border agency that is also our call we would want all the border agencies, all the government, OMAS, all those that work at the borders, for us, all of us, to work together with the private sector, hold hand, because that which we would want to achieve, to provide, to bring about improved service delivery, efficiency, reduced cost, streamlined uh, custom clearance procedure, cannot be achieved only if it's only one entity that is focused on the implementation of the program because when you get at the border you have you have a uh, namibia agronomic board meat board Ministry of agriculture home affair so all of us we need to come together with our private sector we hold hand and we move in the same direction we also seek to build saku institutions 
while we also engage very meaningfully in, uh, to enable the SACU member states to speak in one voice uh, in international fora, whether it be us as SACU negotiating trade agreements with the rest of the world, key among which is yet another pillar, trying to leverage the uh, AFCFTA, the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Opportunity. You will all know, ladies and gentlemen, that African countries are seeking through that arrangement to increase and enhance uh, intra-Africa trade. You will know that Africa is known for very low levels of intra-trade between the member states of Africa. In fact, we trade more with the rest of the world than we trade with ourselves. And uh, you don't find the same thing when you go into, say, South America, where you find levels of uh, intra-continental you know, trade they are very high, um, above 50%. But we are sitting in the teens in terms of percentages. As we look forward, customs administrators and also government agencies, we must be expected by all our servants that we improve in terms of processing in our cargo. We must improve in terms of time, time delivery and specifically timelines that we must. Our service must be reliable and we must have physical intervention that will bring in efficiency and speed. We want to include the SMEs in our program. They are the key drivers to our economy and so we also, as NAMRA, wants to ensure that we support and we also help them to become compliant and also become competitive. So the, the second tier there is the AO compliance program in which we say we reward and uh, we reward you for being compliant and we also assist you to become compliant and we partner in this journey to make Namibia the ideal place to do business. On the 31st of March 2023, NAMRA donated 253 agricultural production tools to the Namibian Correctional Service. Now, the tools are aimed at enhancing food production and activities at correctional farms. Let's look at the highlights of the event. Our work, we really want to impact the livelihood of everyone. And uh, we are very much, we were launched on the 7th of April 2021 by the President, His Excellency Dr. Hage Ji Genko. And he provided a lot of inspiration to us. And he said nobody should be left out. And therefore, even our brothers and sisters who are currently now in the correctional facility to be rehabilitated so that they can be reintegrated in the society as law-abiding citizens, they must also not be left out. Our mandate when they come to us is that they don't leave the same as they came in. They leave rehabilitated and we even go, we even follow them into the community sometimes, uh, some of them. In our reintegration uh, 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 duties. So our mandate is to provide safe, secure and humane custody to these people while they are with us, to rehabilitate them and also to reintegrate them. After a short break, we'll be joined by Mr. Haitang Nelumbu, the Chief Financial Officer at NAMRA. We administer, take some custom laws, so efficiently and consistently. We are ethical, effective in changing lives. We are there for you, this is your revenue. NAMRA. NAMRA. Serving with passion to positively impact the livelihood of every Namibian.
Good day, Mr. Nelumpo. How are you doing today? I'm oh, very well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. Um, can you brief us a little about your journey with Namra so far? Well, I joined in August 2022, and um, my focus and, and my purpose has been to build an organization that really aspires to that vision of being a world-class revenue agency that serves with passion mm. to positively impact the livelihoods of every Namibian. So that's what I believe in, and that is what motivates me and, and inspires me every day. Um, when I joined, um, the department was actually quite uh, in its infancy. And when I joined um, in August, in October, we appointed over 20 people. And then they joined, and then the department effectively became relatively fully staffed. And the colleagues have implemented a lot of policies and processes, and they're now settling into their roles. So that's been my journey so far at Namra. Awesome. Can you enlighten our viewers out there on the functions of your department? So the functions of the department are, we're mandated to, to look after uh, and manage our procurement processes. Mm -hmm. um, we also uh, look after financial control, so that's your typical finance function. Uh, then we have what we call the revenue treasury function that we look after, and that is accounting for state funds and revenue that we actually collect um, on behalf of uh, the state. And then the last component is we look after the physical assets and facilities. So those are the four key functions that we look at as a department, and that's why our name is Finance and Corporate Services. Great. You mentioned procurement is one of the functions, right? Yes. Um, um, can you tell us more about that, especially in terms of um, people out there if they want to bid? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so what we do in terms of the procurement uh, processes at NAMRA, um, we, 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 we have internal processes and policy um, that guides us and what we do is we, we want transparency, so we tend to advertise uh, for any uh, bids, any awards, uh, we, because we, we do and we do need to ensure that when we procure, we're procuring uh, at the best value, um, but we also need to ensure that we obtain quality service delivery. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the process and that is what is embedded in terms of our processes under procurement. Awesome. We understand that you have also impact on a few projects. Can you tell us more about that? Impact on a few projects? I think some of the bigger projects that we've done are in the assets and facilities space. Um, so we, we recently were supporting and leading uh, because we look after the physical assets. So that includes offices and also staff accommodation. So with the opening um, of the 24-hour border now at Trans Kalahari, previously it, it was not on a 24-hour basis, we had to improve and expand uh, the staff accommodation at the border. So what we did is we led the renovation of staff accommodation that was at the border that enabled us to appoint more uh, colleagues in the customs function to support and add a shift to enable the 24-hour operations at the border. We are also in the process of erecting and actually building more staff accommodation at the border to enable even more staff to join the border. Uh, so that's currently one of the major projects that we have led. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Now in line with that, how do you plan to maximize the budget, especially in the new financial year? What we do in terms of maximization of the budget, we always emphasize on achieving our strategic objectives. So we have a, a business plan, a financial plan, um, but we do more than just looking at the numbers. We look at the impact. So we ask ourselves, what can we do in terms of our mandate? Um, part of our mandate is to improve service delivery and also to increase revenue collection. So we need to implement better service. And that costs money. We have to invest in improving our assets and facilities, improving our technology, um, recruiting skilled staff. So all of these things are items that we prioritize from a budget perspective. Uh, what we also do is we also look at revenue collection and there are specific strategies that we have and we need to fund those strategies to improve revenue collection for the state. I see. Now you, need, you see there's always a misconception about the use of taxpayers and traders' money, right? Please explain to us what this money is used for. Okay, so, so it's quite interesting. Um, with taxpayer money, um, in this country, it is used to fund public services that I think we all use. Um, so it's used to fund hospitals, schools, clinics. And um, an interesting example that we don't, often don't think about 
but I've experienced this um, in various, with various family members. One can deliver a child in a public hospital, a state hospital, for with a nominal fee of under $100, Namibian dollars. The same service, if you were to go into the private medical uh, space, you would be paying easily over 20000 And that is funded using taxpayer money. So that just goes to show you the value that often we receive, and we don't always perceive it as, as that value. And I think that's something that we really should, should be grateful for, that we have this level of service and, that we receive using public funds. Awesome. Do you have any final remarks to share with our viewers before we close off the session? I think my final remarks are NAMRA is an institution that is under serious construction. Uh, we are working tirelessly to, uh, to strive towards a vision of being that world-class revenue agency. Uh, we are working to truly serve our nation so that we can continue to positively impact uh, the livelihoods of every Namibian. And, but we need the support. We need the support of, of every single Namibian. We need to understand that there are a lot of good things, a lot of good services that we need. And we need that revenue. We need taxpayers to want to contribute, to want to be fully compliant so that we can continue to build a great nation that we will all be proud to call home. Great. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate your effort. Okay, thank you. Now that was Mr. Haitange Nelumbu, the Chief Financial Officer at NAMRA, briefing us on the functions of the Corporate Finance Department. We'll be back shortly. We administer text and custom laws so efficiently and consistently. We are ethical, effective in changing lives. We are there for you. This is your revenue. Namra. Namra. Serving with passion to positively impact the livelihood of every Namibian. Gerard Ilega is a senior graphic designer for the Namibia Revenue Agency and has more than 11 years of experience in graphic design. He joined NAMRA in 2021. In the next insert, we'll hear more from him. My name is Gerard Ilega. I'm the senior design and branding officer at NAMRA. And my journey with NAMRA has started um, since 2021 and I've been responsible for design and branding for NAMRA. Basically what motivates me is uh, anybody who has achieved uh, their highest points in their career, uh, whether being my uh, peers or subordinates. And basically what I do here at NAMRA is uh, to ensure that uh, all the designs and branding materials are produced to the highest quality and also to the highest standards uh, which are guided by um, our brand guidelines which we have established and also just to make sure the process is smooth between uh, printers and um, NAMRA. My future plans is to basically grow with the organization, learn from it and also <coughs> give my contribution as a uh, an individual and hopefully in uh, five years we'll look at this organization um, we we'll look back at this organization and you see the growth and we're proud of ourselves. In conclusion, I want to leave with you with a quote from um, David Ogilvy, uh, which says that uh, um, big ideas are usually simple. Uh, basically what that means is that um, if you want to achieve something, you want an idea to reach a wider audience, you should simplify it for everyone to understand. As always, NAMRA strives for diversity and educating our stakeholders on tax and trade matters. In this edition, we are going to look at the due dates in Oshiherero and Damara Nama. Ochiwa Nama Jibiniwa, and Dino Ndi Matuta Rago Maiti Thilo Tututu Shisha Murongo. Otututu Imoe Nino Kwe Tisira Po Zombero Ode Tudo Namara Mo Parangawehi Apehe Puziri. Po Mwe Tisira Po Yue Shwa Tata Go Tungo Yure Turo Aetas. Ututuwi shita tata kututu toshi shamrongo peno rutu roshi mariva shi supa roshi mariva shi tesho muture auhe rutuwi muno tutu tuta tu peke peke rutu oru tenga oru vasute roshi shamrongo me muno shi mariva shi mumwede porwe vasute roshi shamrongo me muno shi mariva porwe we unjuwa kuhusha vesukui tisotu tutu au 
command ro angaro no mbura ihe rutu orisha kwa kuma tukatara rutu rubafuti wa jisha murongo wana zonge shefa na watuta pe unjira kwa kusho tutu utu itu soko ita kwa mbura maandero wateni nani mbura ihe rutu orisha tatu oro zonge shefa nderi kuramina zonge shefa nderi kuramina unjira kusha nga kusha ngisi wako nga ndaya tuji wa namra nupe unjira kwa kusha umyeze hambo mbari kwa mbundo maandero wembo roshi mbari wa zeso kuitiso tutu utu wa watu jisha murongo Kita ada yang mahu merungut penurutu, roba ungurise, roba ungurise. Bukan juga aku cakap, aku cakap orang anda itu injil anak mera, awak itu sah tutu tua, mumuide awuhe, umungur awuhe. Bukan juga aku cakap, aku cakap nuna si Maria, nuna si Maria, aku si Maria si umur, bawa sah itu taruh si samurongo. Atau tu si Maria si nuku itu sah rutu, kumurungo nova, ayah si tu minum ibadi, umur itu mau kongkari lepo. Rutu, orang cakap aku matu katara, rutu. Rochi cha murongo, sisiwe zwa kuhi hapa na yunguri sisiwa na yirandoa, hizi situ cha oviyeti. Pungira koko cha, umundo au hapa muna geshefa, muna ndiye mwa shangizi sisiwa kuhi kuviyeti. Usogui tisa orutu rero viyeti, umawa shia situ mirongo yivari na itano, kumundo rwe zendi mwa shangizi sisiwa shiwa pat. Orutu orusi ni nakumaru katara, orutu rochi mario chisutwa shumo katika kumbura, indi tu cha operational tax return. Pana zonge shefa na watu ta pe unjira koko shafu soko iti sa watu tu tu vari na kusuta moga tiki kumbra na kama andi rombora orudua rutenga kwa watu ta na wana zonge shefa pe unjira koko shafu kama andi waka shafu kumbra hii usoko iti sa watu tu rwe na watu orusi ni na na kusuta shi shamo rongo kama andi rwa tenga rindi zonge shefa pe unjira koko shafu soko iti sa watu tu ndo amele hambo mwe kumbu na man kama watu rwe mbora shi mariva na kama andi rwe mbora shi mariva kwa iti sa nuko Tutah oji sya murongo murwede turi wana watu wana medisi dira. Ogo ep. Kain kuas kaun. Tida ke yang si kapada sting enak. Tida ke marin kaku peros enam ras sting ansa sama asli semha. Nek kuat kade ke tika kaun ka. Kau kain ni kain hasa mata cedi ngami pera kau kau si kau nara ogo mata. Hoka Kui ay maris kaya mo nang adin nga tora kasa. Sa oras si Kui Kui Bay, Kui ay maris si Wang Habib kaya mo na disis kamang ay dis ay kuri koro pera mata e. Turi turi Bay hari kuku si kari aun si Wang Habib kaya mo na disis tara kung hab dis ay kuri koro pera mata e. Mui tadi amahu matare si Wang Habib ke mungkin ma mari kurip wap dis ma mari kurip wap ams kau ka ramadhan season ma awn dis si Wang Habib season ma awn ta season awn di kagor beho kas tabak tayma kui ay maris sin habit ke tam disis matap wap dis ay ramata e si kadi mataris na kan ay ay radi e kasibang arosa kui ay maris sin wag habit ke tam disis korong as matam ikap wap dis ay ramata e Si mata restina kan ay ay radi e. Kaha uira hum ay rang aro e kui ay maris ke tam disis matap wap dis ay ramata e. Si mata restina kan ay ay radi e. Nest hadagi kui hangase kau narakan nedi i hanghasa matap sete. Para may basen i aro sen ramaris Si orang kau hasil mata yang habis gua ira mae harap pakai basen hari kai kan kan. Here is the trivia of duties. Did you know, for transfer pricing purposes? Cross-border transactions between two related parties should be at arm's length. 
meaning the price at which two independent parties will be willing to transact. Saving with passion. The Namibia Revenue Agency and the World Customs Organization launched one of the most exciting customs programs on the 12th of July 2022 called the Advance Ruling. Advance Ruling is a binding decision on classification, valuation and origin prior to the importation and exportation of goods. Here is Mr. Philemon Amomo, Senior Customs and Excise Officer, taking us through. As you know, Namibia is a contract party to the WTO, which is a World Trade Organization, uh, and the WTO concluded negotiation uh, in 2013 in Bali, Indonesia, during the ministerial uh, conference. Uh, at the center of that negotiation was trade predicaments, such as the hiking trade cost, uh, red tape at the border, uh, as well as delay at the point of entries. So, as a result, the member state concluded by creating a trade facilitation agreement. Uh, the trade facilitation agreement consists of four fundamentals, uh, which is the transparency, standardization, simplification, as well as harmonization of customs uh, procedures and trade practices. So, there are 12 measures in this trade facilitation agreement. Advanced ruling is measure number three. Advanced ruling place obligation on member states to issue advanced ruling within a reasonable time to traders who have requested for it. Now, Namibia have launched uh, through NAMRA uh, advanced ruling in 2022 July. And, uh, that event was also attended by the WCO Secretary General, Dr. Kunio Mukuria. Uh, to date, we have issued 153 
advanced tooling on HS. It shows our commitment toward implementing the advanced tooling. Now, coming back to your question, um, what is advanced learning? Uh, advanced learning is a written binding decision issued by customs to traders who have requested for it in writing. Advanced learning benefits. The advanced learning is aligned to the principles of trade facilitation agreement, which is transparent, standardization, harmonization, and simplification of trade procedures and practices. Now, there are two levels of benefit. There's strategic level benefit, and there's also business level benefit. When we talk about business level, level benefit, we mean low trade cost. We mean enhanced compliance, as well as efficient revenue collection. When you talk about strategic benefit, we mean now that all these business level benefit contributes to the employment creation, it contributes to the optimum revenue collection for the government, and then it is also contribute to the foreign uh, direct investment. This translates into the economic growth. Advanced learning requirements. Clients must complete an application form for advanced learning. And uh, there are three types of forms that we are currently using. There is a, a form for advanced learning on HS classification. There is a form for advanced learning on valuation. There is also a form for advanced learning on rules of origin. So these forms must be completed in full and they must hand, be handed over to number of offices or they can be submitted electronically or on info at namura.org.na. So another requirement is that each product requires a separate application. So products cannot be combined on under one application form. By now you are aware that Namra is deliberate about taxpayer trader education. The next insert looks at how one can file income tax returns for dormant companies. Good day, my name is Nesla Watanawa and I'm going to take you through on how dormant companies can submit their provisional tax returns on ITAS. Step 1. Log into your ITAS portal by entering your username and password. Step 2. Go to Returns. Step 3. Click on My Returns. Step 4. Click on Search Your Return. Step 5. Click on the provisional return you wish to submit. Step 6. Click on the File Your Return button. Step 7. Complete the form by entering zero on estimated taxable income. Step 8. Scroll down to declare by clicking in the box. Step 9. Scroll up to enter the verification code. Step 10. Then click on the Submit button. today's question. How much did NAMRA collect on behalf of the state for the financial year 2022-2023? Before we conclude today's episode, here is Yaruke Kurondorokave, Chief Strategic Communication and Support Engagement, wrapping up the financial year 2022 at NAMRA. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Financial year 2022-23 has just ended on a very high note for us. There are so many activities that happened during the last 12 months, starting with the recruitment of additional staff. As a very active and vibrant uh, department, 
we needed to get on a few staff members who have actually come on board and I must say they have just hit the ground running with the contribution that they have made. But during that year also other significant activities uh, uh, took place. One key for us is the launch of Namra Kachino, the platform that we are using now, uh, which we launched in October last year. As I'm speaking to you, this is episode number 11. It tells you we have already produced 10 episodes of quality products that talks about what we do as the Namibia Revenue Agency. We will continue enhancing that because it's, it's a key platform for us. It allows those that are not able to come into our office get access to what we produce, what we send out. So it's something that we are going to retain. During the past year, we have also participated in various exhibitions. And like we say, we cannot keep what we do to ourselves, but we need to take that out to the public that needs it the most. So much so that when we set up and the kind of attention that we drew at all those exhibitions and trade fairs that we have been to, we find that to be rewarding. At the Windhoek Show, we walked out with two awards as uh, being a very service-oriented entity, and that only then encourages us to continue. Also during that space, but obviously internally, we also saw the approval of the communications policy, which is key for the entity as a whole, but for us as a department, because it provides a guide as to how we issue communication internally, but more importantly for this platform externally. How do we communicate externally so that when people see our communication, they're able to say, this one is coming from the Namibia Revenue Agency. With the limited time that is available to me, I must and I cannot end without talking about Namra Talks. Now, this is a platform that we created where we are invited participants to talk to us about the selected topics that we had and what an event it was. The submissions that we got were very impressive in terms of the volume, but also the, the substance and the quality that they contained. We look forward to the next financial year also creating a platform where others got to talk to us about what we do and how we can improve what we do for the benefit of Namibia. So, with all these activities that have been happening within our space as uh, strategic communications and support engagements responsible for taxpayer education, stakeholders engagement and international relations, we are very excited as to what the future brings. At the end of the year, with the financial year that is, we were able to reach out to colleagues within the region, other sister revenue agencies within the region, and we see that growing and firming up. So, for 2023-2024, we're just excited. And that brings us to the end of this edition of Namraka Channel. We'll be back in two weeks, but until then, goodbye. Giving fairness and equality.